I'm really just trying to go with the flow here, but I'm also trying to stay organized and I'm also trying to have everything planned and everything together. It's okay, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's a freaking Saturday. I literally never film on Saturdays, but my boyfriend had to work today and I was like, why don't I take advantage of the empty apartment? Because I, I'm a little Little strapped for time lately. I got a lot going on. So uh, yeah, that brings us to why we are here today. I, should I do a different intro? Should I still do it? But that was not, not, that's not, what do I say? But that's not what this video is about. I think we'll be a little more casual today. It's a, gonna be a chatty get ready with me because I am overwhelmed. I know it's hard to tell from how relaxed I'm looking. <laughs> I'm feeling a little overwhelmed right now. But yeah, so I'm gonna be giving you the full update today on what's going on in my personal life and probably slip into a bunch of unusual accents as always and I'm gonna be doing my freaking makeup I got you know the classic I got my little makeup shelf here with a bunch of different products on it I think I want to use the Genesis palette and the Ace Beauté Oceanic palette today since they're both kind of blue I thought it could be fun to do a blue green look you know I wore a green shirt I have little flower earrings let's do something vibrant and fun today I think that could put me in a good headspace and inspire me to get through the rest of the day. So if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you want to get a little casual with me and do a chatty get ready with me, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching. It's coming at you right now. All right, I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see me do the eye makeup. I think that'll be fun. I'm going to start with my Ace Beauté Oceanic palette here because today I just woke up wanting to use the shade Algae. I freaking dream about the shade Algae. This is the most beautiful neon green color. Ugh, it's so pretty. It's such a vibrant color. It just puts me in a good mood. Ugh, like immediately my mood is lifted. I feel incredible already. Do you guys ever feel that way with makeup? I don't know. Makeup is kind of like my self-care. I know I need to be doing more self-care for myself. I'm not very good at doing self-care, but as of right now, the greatest self-care that I do for myself is taking the time to do my makeup every day. And it really does brighten my mood, Ugh, especially when I wear such bright, bold, beautiful colors. But yeah, so let's get into what's going on in my personal life right now. It's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. It's just a little overwhelming because I am moving. Yes, me and my boyfriend Vince and our sweet, sweet, sweet little cat Bert, we are all moving and I'm overwhelmed about it. I'm excited about it. That should be like what I know first is that I'm incredibly, incredibly excited about it. Also, I have less reason to be overwhelmed because we are not moving far. Like it's literally walking distance from where we live right now. Like we are moving so close by, but it's to a slightly bigger apartment, which is so exciting because we've lived in this studio apartment for the last three years and I love it. I have never been opposed to a small amount of space. You know, I don't have a ton of money, so it was nice to have a place with cheaper rent. And we really made the most of our studio. We love being together. We never really felt the stress of like not having our own space or anything because it's a studio, but we do have a separate kitchen and everything. So, you know, it felt, it felt spacious for a while. But now that we have a cat, we've had Bert, we've had Bert most of the time living in this apartment. We got him the very end of 2018 and we moved here in the spring of 2018. So Bert has pretty much been with us here the whole time. But uh, yeah, Bert needs some more space and so do we. We also need some more space. This is a very small studio apartment. It's literally 400 square feet. It's very tiny, which as I said, hasn't really, really bothered us. But you know, we're starting to get to the place where I'm wanting some more space, you know? So we found a one bedroom and oh my goodness, it is so cute. It's so nice. I can't wait to show you guys. Oh my gosh, when I film in there, <gasps> there's so much light in this apartment. This apartment I'm in now has like pretty good light. I mean, you can see I'm, I'm well lit here, right? I got a ring light, but it's a well lit apartment. But the new apartment is even more well lit. It has more windows, which is really exciting. And the thing that I'm most excited about is that I can see the train from my windows and maybe that doesn't 
doesn't sound like a big deal, but it's literally like it's it's my romantic New York City fantasy to be able to see the train go by from my window. It's so so cool. You can see people standing on the platform, and oh my gosh, I know that Bert is literally gonna lose his mind. He's gonna love watching the people go by. If this is somehow your first video of mine, Bert is my cat. He is my sweet sweet little prince cat man, but he's a little angel boy, and I love him so so much. I'm dipping into the Genesis palette now, by the way. I'm dipping into this shade right here. It's called Loved. But yeah, Bert is my sweet little angel cat man. And I just know he's gonna love having the extra space. And also for Vince and I, it'll be nice for us to have, oh, why is there glitter on this brush? I didn't know there was glitter on this brush. Ah, it's okay, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. That's been my whole attitude the last few days ever since we found out we were moving. I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Cause that's the thing, moving in New York City is like a very quick process. And even though I've been through it before, I somehow forgot from last time how quickly everything happens. Like we saw an apartment we liked, we went and saw it, and then we immediately applied for it literally the same day. The application process did take a little while, but then once we got approved, it was like wham bam, okay, we're, we're moving now, you know? And we didn't initially want to move until May, but this apartment that we saw was basically like, sorry, April or nothing. So we are moving a month earlier than we initially anticipated we would be, but it's okay. You gotta be flexible, right? As a Virgo, I am not always the best at being flexible. I am not always the best at adapting to changes but I'm trying to get better about that, you know? So I'm really just trying to go with the flow here, but I'm also trying to stay organized and I'm also trying to have everything planned and everything together. So, you know, it's 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 that, It's that's what's happening. <laughs> All right, going in with my NYX glitter primer now before I go in with my shimmer, but uh, yeah, we're moving. That's the That's been the big change going on here right now. Like I was just saying, I'm not always great at adapting to change. The thing is, I love moving in the sense that I love living in a new place. Oh my gosh, I get so excited. I love to have new views. I love to have new little neighborhood spots that I go to. Like, I'm so, so excited to move, but I just, the process of moving is just like, I would rather rip out my organs individually than go through the moving process. It's so overwhelming. And my mom is coming up to help and that's gonna be so helpful. She's coming up Monday. So that'll be great. And she also has a car, so that's gonna be super, super helpful to us. But I feel like these, just these next couple days, I don't know what to do with myself, you know? I know I need to pack, but also at the same time, I'm like, what, do, what is packing? What do I pack first? What do I pack it in? Do I pack it in a box? Do I put newspapers in the box? Do I wrap things up individually? I don't know, there's just all these questions. It's just like looking at the top of the mountain and I'm like, I know I can get to the top, but I also know it's gonna be really hard, so it's hard for me to even start, but I can, and I will start, and I will get there, and it will be fine. But I'm just a little overwhelmed right now, and you know, also keeping up with my content, I don't wanna miss any videos, because I'm really liking the way my channel is going right now. You guys have been so, so supportive. Thank you to everyone who watches my videos and who comments on my videos and who interacts with me on both Instagram and YouTube. I am in, so in love with the community that we have created here together. You guys are so sweet and I just, I love being on YouTube. So I don't wanna miss an upload because I don't want to, you know, be a, have it be a detriment to my channel because unfortunately YouTube does value consistency. So missing uploads it's not always the best thing for your channel but also I just I genuinely love making videos and I genuinely love talking to you guys and I know I'm gonna be sad if I miss an upload so I want to keep uploading during the move like I said I'm hoping it's not gonna take too long since my mom's gonna have her car and everything and because we're not that far away from the new place and yeah that's that's what's going on with that but I've been reading a really good book lately that has been helping me to manage my stress and I want to recommend it to you guys even though I have haven't finished it yet. Should I wait to finish the book to recommend it? Yeah, maybe, but I'm almost halfway through and I feel confident recommending it. It's called Claim Your Power 
It's by a guy named Mastin Kip. Another form of self-care that I've been incorporating for myself is reading personal development books, you know, working on myself. Eventually I would like to get back into therapy. I loved going to therapy in college when it was free. I wish I had taken advantage of it more. I only started going to see a counselor in college my senior year. Oh my gosh, I had such a good therapist. She was so sweet. We got it. We really vibed, you know, like that was a therapist I really clicked with. And then I graduated college and I moved to the city and I didn't go to therapy for a couple years. And then when I did eventually find a therapist that was in my network and got back into it, she was just not a great fit for me. Ugh, and that sucks. I feel like that deters so many people away from therapy. It's not deterring me because I know that it is possible to find somebody that you click with. So I do want to get back into it. But I just, if you have tried therapy and you didn't click with the person that you met with, please don't let it turn you away for life. Because I promise you, when you find somebody that you click with, it is like the best feeling in the world. Like it is so amazing to find a therapist that you really click with and you don't need to feel bad if you're meeting with someone and it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like you guys are on the same wavelength. Like obviously, you know, give it a try. Maybe give it a couple of sessions before you decide it's not working. I'm also not a therapist, so like feel free to ignore my advice. But from personal experience, I feel like it's good to give somebody a try. But if you're on like your third, fourth session and you still are just leaving not feeling as good as when you walked in, don't feel bad about parting ways with that therapist. They don't care. That's the thing. That's what my therapist in college told me. She was like, if you ever feel like when I first started meeting with her, she was like, if you ever feel like our sessions aren't benefiting you, please let me know because I literally do not care. You will not hurt my feelings if you need to meet with someone else because everybody has, you know, different fits and different people they vibe with. And if it's not a fit with us, that's totally fine. I don't know. Maybe that's not something you guys worry about, but I am just like always worried about hurting other people's feelings. So it was really good and beneficial for me to hear that from her saying, if you don't click with someone, it's fine. The therapist does not care. They, they will move on about their day. But why was I even talking about therapy? Oh, because I was talking about my book. Yes, I was talking about Claim Your Power, which is a book that I'm reading and I'm absolutely loving. The whole premise of the book is that you are reclaiming your power after years of giving your power away. And it teaches you how you've given your power away to other people. And the whole point is to help you get it back. But in the meantime, it has you delve into all of your past traumas and stuff that you didn't even realize was trauma until you were reading the book. That's why I say don't let it be your first personal development book just because, you know, it, it might be a little emotionally triggering for you if you feel like you are in a better place to talk to a therapist about that than to read it in a book. You know, totally do what's best for you. Right now, I am not seeing a therapist because I just, honestly, I don't have the money to right now. Therapy is expensive. I wish it were free. And you know, I need to do some research into whether or not my insurance company covers it. Cause I would love to talk to an actual therapist, but in the meantime, I have also been loving my little personal development books. I do really feel like this book has been helping me to identify the ways that I, like I can I keep saying the name of the book, give away my power and identifying the things that are holding me back from making changes and the things that are making me afraid of making changes in my life. It's just, it's a difficult book to describe. You really should read it for yourself. I really like it a lot. And what I really like about this book is that they have you journal with every chapter. So each day, it's a 40 day book. So you're supposed to read a chapter a day and each chapter has you like write stuff down. Sometimes the stuff you write down makes you cry. Sometimes the stuff you write down makes you feel like, oh my gosh, this is such a breakthrough. And I just, I really like the way the book is written. I really like the way he speaks. I like the way he organizes the chapters. They're easy to digest. The chapters are short. The writing prompts aren't too long. You can write as much or as little as you want. And I find them to be very beneficial. It's causing me to journal every day and to read every day, which are two things I really wanted to do more in 2021. And it's been lifting my mood. It's been making me feel better. So I'm a big fan of that. I feel like I've been rambling about my book for such a long time, but that's okay because it also gives me the opportunity to ask you guys for book recommendations. I've read You Are a Badass. I know she also wrote a book called You Are a Badass at Money, which I had one person on Instagram recommend to me, so I might read that. I don't know, have you guys read that? Is it any good? I am definitely not a badass at money right now. I'm pretty good at saving money, but I don't know what to do with it. Money is, I definitely have some, you know, preconceived notions about money, some negative attitudes 
leads towards money. So I would love to get better with money. So maybe I should read that book. But yeah, if you have any personal development book recommendations, I would love to hear them. I know a lot of people like Rachel Hollis's Girl, Wash Your Face. That one is on my short reading list right now that maybe I'll read that one. But what do you guys think? Oh my goodness, I was worried I wouldn't have anything to say in this chatty get ready with me, but apparently I have a lot to say about everything. But uh, yeah, that's basically what's been going on. I've been stressed about moving, but also feeling great about reading my personal development books. I've been really having a good time with YouTube. I love making YouTube videos. Like I said, I know it probably sounds like everybody says, oh, I love making YouTube videos. I love talking to you guys. And maybe it feels fake sometimes, but I genuinely do. Like before I started making YouTube videos, I was so lost. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I kind of was in a spot after college where I felt like I had no passion. I went to college for acting. I don't know, maybe that surprises you, maybe that doesn't, but I went to college for acting and halfway through acting school, I realized they didn't want to do acting anymore because it stopped being fun. I just felt like acting stopped being fun for me and I realized the acting part of it was wasn't really what I liked. I liked getting to make people laugh. I liked getting to make people feel good. And I noticed I could always do that by being my theatrical dramatic self. And when I had to play characters that I couldn't do that with, I was like, oh man, this is no fun anymore. So in discovering YouTube and in discovering my love of makeup, because I really didn't discover my love of makeup until after I graduated college, all of my college roommates were so good at makeup. Oh my gosh, they are all still very good at makeup. But like I was not the makeup roommate I was the roommate that took five minutes to get ready because she probably didn't even wash her face and she probably just rolled out of bed wearing makeup from yesterday. Yeah, that's who I was in college. I didn't really care about my appearance all that much. So after college, I started watching YouTube videos of people doing makeup. I don't even know how it started. I think I started with the Nikki Tutorials video. I started finding all of the big YouTubers on there and I just really fell in love with makeup. I started playing with makeup myself. I was like, oh my gosh, this is such a great way to explore my creativity. Feels like doing art every single day, but it's a canvas that you can wipe away at the end of the day and you can start over anytime. And I just thought that was so fun because I've always been a very artistic lady. I always loved art class in high school, like painting and drawing and doing collages. I love collaging. Collaging is so fun, you guys. Oh my gosh, if you haven't made a collage before, print you out some pictures and make a collage, and I promise you, it'll make you feel like a million bucks. I don't know why I just love collaging so much, but I've always been very into art, so I don't know why I never really tried makeup. I just, I always was a very minimalist when it came to makeup. I know that's so hard to imagine based on the way I do my makeup now, but I was such a minimalist when it came to makeup. Oh my gosh, I would wear eyeliner and mascara and literally that was it. No concealer, no, not even lip balm. Ma'am, I was so dry, oh my gosh. I used to be very much like take pride in the fact that I didn't wear a lot of makeup, which is like literally why, like nobody cares. You don't get a prize for not wearing makeup, you know? Like if you don't wear makeup, that's totally cool. Like no judgment to people who don't wear makeup, but like I used to be the type of like person who like felt, you know, like a little high and mighty, like a little oh, oh, oh because I didn't wear makeup, which is like, ma'am, shut up, nobody cares, you know? <laughs> but once I started wearing makeup, it wasn't because I was covering stuff up that I felt good. And I think that was my thoughts about makeup before, is that I thought if I got into makeup that it would become about like covering up my natural features and that's why I didn't want to get into it because I didn't want to get into, you know, a negative space in my body where I wasn't feeling good about what I looked like naturally. But makeup never became that for me, you know? It always became more of a creative element than anything else. You know, like I said, it was never about masking the features I had for me. It was about enhancing the features that I had and adding glitter because adding glitter makes everything more fun. Oh my gosh, that's really what made me want to get into makeup was highlight because once I discovered what highlight was watching those Nikki tutorials videos, I was like, what? Like, oh my gosh, I was just so blown away by highlighter and how it just looks so beautiful. Like, obviously it's not trying to look natural, especially in 2017 when I was getting into makeup, they were not going for a natural highlight. No way. The highlight was about beaming from outer space. The first highlight I ever used was from a Revlon quad. It had this like shimmery champagne shade that I would apply with my fingers on my face. And I remember the first time I caught my reflection in public, I was like, oh, 
ma'am, you look amazing. And I was like, okay, I got the makeup bug. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Let's go all in. Let's go all the way. And I just, you know, I kept getting more and more into makeup as the time went on. And I just, I still think it's so fun. And it took me a few years to delve into color. You know, I definitely stayed in my neutral zone for a while there. I really, believe it or not, I only got into very colorful makeup after quarantine started last year because I didn't really need to wear my makeup anywhere, you know, I was just wearing it at home. So I started just playing around with color more. I started following a lot more indie brands, which definitely helped me get into color because the indie brands are just like all about the colors and I love it so much. And when I was supposed to be relating this to how I got into YouTube, oh my goodness. So yeah, like I was saying, I was watching YouTube videos for a long time, for a couple of years before I started my own YouTube video. And then I started making practice YouTube videos, like videos I didn't know if I would upload, but just to like, just to try, just to see if I can do it. I think I filmed at least like three videos before I uploaded one for the first time, just because I was so embarrassed. And if you're somebody who's thinking about starting a YouTube channel and you feel embarrassed, let me be your sign to just do it anyways, because here's the deal. Yeah, your first video you're gonna look back on in a couple of years and cringe at, and I certainly do that. But also, I look back on that first video so fondly because I'm like, that took so much courage for me to do. It took so much courage for me to put myself out there and to do something that I felt like people might make fun of me for, but I was just gonna do it anyways because I wanted to and I loved watching YouTube videos and I felt like I didn't I didn't even know if I had anything to offer but I just I wanted to put myself out there and I wanted to try it and see if I liked it and I freaking loved it. I loved it so so much. But yeah, so I started my YouTube channel in 2018 and I was making videos probably like once a week for a while there. I definitely missed weeks often. I definitely went months in between sometimes. But you know, I was making videos here and there, but I wasn't really taking it too seriously or anything. I was just making them for fun, which is always why you should start YouTube. You should always start YouTube for fun because you love it. You shouldn't get into it for the money. I'm a strong believer in that. But in 2020, I decided I wanted to start taking my YouTube channel a little seriously, you know? I saw that people have made a living out of doing YouTube, which is like absolutely wild to me. And I genuinely love making videos. And I was like, you know what? It could be fun to do something that I love. I feel like I don't talk about this often and you'll only know if you watch to the end of this video because I feel like I don't make this public knowledge at all but I want to do YouTube as a career. I mean, I don't know if I just wanna do YouTube. Here's the deal. I definitely, I understand that YouTube could disappear at any point and I can't put all my eggs in one basket with YouTube, but I want to do something in the, in the public sphere, in the, in the public eye and in the beauty community, you know, because I really, I love making these videos. I love talking to you guys and I'm at the point now where my channel is monetized, which is amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and supporting my channel. But yeah, I'm like, this is fun. I want to keep doing this and imagine if I could do this as a career. Oh my gosh, that would be so freaking cool. And uh, yeah, this is my roundabout way of saying that I love YouTube and I want it to be my career. But yeah, I just want to start being less shy about it, you know? It's something I'm, I'm learning in the book here, something I learned in You Are a Badass, and something I learned in my Claim Your Power book is to not be shy about the things you love. Like, why are you, why am I so shy about talking about things that I want to do? You know, I tell my friends and I tell my family that this is what I want to do. Well, I tell, I tell very select people. I shouldn't say I tell my friends and family. Hi, friends and family. This is, this is what I want to do. Okay, cool. Great. Glad we talked about it. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop being shy about the things I am passionate about. And, you know, this is one of my goals is to be able to sustain myself doing YouTube, to be able to make enough money to sustain myself doing YouTube and other things. Obviously, I know you can't just have one income stream anymore, but uh, I'd, talking to you guys is what I love to do. And if I can make a career off of that, holy freaking moly, that would be amazing. Okay, that's enough gabbing for now. I'm not going to do my mascara on camera because I will most definitely get it on my eyelids. So <laughs> let me do my mascara real quick and then I'll come back and gab a little more. All right, and here you have it. Here's my 
finished look. Let me zoom you in again just so we can see the look here. I love these colors. These colors go so well together. Oh my gosh, the Genesis palette with the Ace Beauté Oceanic palette. Uh, yeah, these two were like made for each other. I don't think I even showed them to you next to each other so I can show you how they really do look like they're like made to go together. Look at these guys. There's some common shades here. There's some, some similar shades, but I also feel like they complement each other really well and I really liked wearing these together. I love taking two palettes that I love and using them together. But I hope you guys liked this video. I hope I didn't just ramble aimlessly for like 45 minutes. I mean, I did. I know that's how long it's been and I know I've been rambling aimlessly, but hopefully I've edited it together to be a little more digestible. Let me know if you like this style of video, if you like chatty get ready with me, see if you like hearing me ramble about personal development and my anxieties and uh, why I do YouTube and all sorts of stuff like that. And uh, I'll do more of these, you know, maybe I could do like one a month or something if you like this type of video let me know if you watched the end of the video if you watched the end of the video oh my gosh you're you're such a good friend thank you so much for doing that but yeah i hope you like this video Ooh, let me zoom out for my outro thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel i post new videos every monday wednesday and friday at 4 p.m eastern standard time it's always good fun sweet time check out my description box for all of the makeup products i used on my face today also in my description box i will have a bunch of black lives matter resources as well as a bunch of resources to help the Asian American community. So please check out those links if you haven't yet. And I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Ooh, I can't wait to see you on the next one. I'll be thinking of you, I'll be missing you, and I will see you on the next one. Okay, bye.